Okay, welcome back to physics problem solving examples. So today we're going to do a problem related to uniform circular motion. Now one of the most common applications of uniform circular motion is the production of forces by moving objects uh, at rapid speed in uniform circles. Most of us encounter this in the form of a device called a centrifuge. We've seen these things in laboratories typically when we take chemistry or biology, but you can also use it in much larger applications and in particular NASA uses it uh, in something called the human centrifuge. So this is a device uh, that NASA has to train the astronauts. It's in a large room. You'll see there's a person standing over here on the side for scale. And this object, they stick the astronauts in chambers at the end, and then they spin it around, and the astronauts experience centripetal forces, which can be scaled to any size they want, in particular to the sizes that astronauts might experience when they fly rockets. So in this case, this human centrifuge, it's 9 meters from the center pivot point here to the chamber where the astronauts ride, um, and it's capable of producing up to 20 g's of acceleration for the astronaut riding there in the chamber. Now, a space shuttle launch provides a maximum acceleration of just over 3 g's. So what does that mean? That's three times little g, where g is the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth. So when I say you're experiencing a certain number of g's, I mean you're experiencing gravity at a factor that's a multiple of what you would experience here on the surface of the Earth. And uh, what we'd like to know is how quickly do we have to rotate this centrifuge to produce 3 g's of acceleration, the acceleration an astronaut would experience on the space shuttle. And then as a part, second part of the question, we ask what is the speed for the maximum, for the 20 g's of acceleration that the human centrifuge can actually produce. So this is a straightforward problem using the things that we've learned about relating forces um, to centripetal force. So in this case we have a circular trajectory, that is the outer radius that the astronaut traces out when they're riding the human centrifuge. It has a radius we'll call R, and we're told in that problem that's 9 meters. And then what we're told is that we want to know how fast it rotates, that is to say, what is the tangential speed at the edge of the circle, the tangential speed associated with the uniform circular motion as I go around this trajectory, uh, for a given acceleration that the astronaut experiences out here in the center, so or uh, on the edge. So if I imagine drawing the astronaut's free body diagram at any point, during the trajectory, there's only one force that the astronaut experiences, and that is the normal force of their chair pushing up on them towards the center of the circle. And so that normal force from the chair is the centripetal force in the problem. And what we're told is that that force has a certain maximum value, which is equal to the mass of the astronaut times the experience, uh, uh, acceleration that the centrifuge is producing. Now we're told in the first part of the problem that that acceleration should be 3 g's. But for the second part of the problem, we're asked to look at that for 20 g's. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, write down the force that the astronaut experiences in terms of an arbitrary number of g's. So let me just use the letter capital N times g, where n is just a number, and g is the familiar 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so this is the force that the astronaut experiences when they are riding in the centrifuge. Okay, there are no other forces that they are experiencing. This is the only one. Now, in uniform circular motion, we know that when we draw the free body diagram, there is, and this is our free body diagram here, there is a force which is responsible for the circular motion. There is a force which is the centripetal force. And in this case, since there's only one force on the free body diagram, that is uh, the only force that could be the centripetal force. And so the force of the chair on the astronaut is the centripetal force. 
And we know that you can write the centripetal force as mv squared, where that is the tangential speed, the thing that we're actually looking for, divided by the radius of the circle that they're traveling on. But, as we wrote in the red square up there, that is also equal to the force that the astronaut feels from the chair. So this is m times the number of g's that we're after times little g. So there is the base formula that we have to solve for vt. And as you can see, it's uh, reasonably straightforward. The m's here algebraically cancel out on both sides of the equation. And so this becomes very simple to solve for vt squared is equal to n g times r, or ultimately vt is equal to the square root of n g r. So that is the final answer that we are after. Now you can see the utility of this. I've just written this out algebraically, and I haven't written it out for any particular sets of numbers, and so I can now go in and do it multiple times for different sets of numbers, for different values of n in particular. So let's put in the numerical values. The tangential speed in this case is the square root of n. So for the first case, we want to know what is it for th n equal to 3. So that's 3, no units, it's just a number, times g. 9.80 meters per second squared times r, which we're told is 9.0 meters. And if I punch those out, that is equal to 264.6 meters squared per second squared all under the square root. So this is good. That's going to give me a speed when I actually take the square root. And so if I numerically take the square root, I find that the tangential speed is 16.3 meters per second for three g's of acceleration. I won't write out all the numbers for the other case, but I know that if I punch in the numbers not for 3, but rather for n equal to 20, which is the maximum acceleration the NASA centrifuge can produce, I find that this will give me 42.0 meters per second for 20 g of acceleration. Okay. So that's an example of how these problems go for evaluating uh, the tangential speed. Now, sometimes you may be asked for the rotational speed, not the tangential speed. And in that case, we're looking for the value of omega, the angular speed of the system. And the angular speed of the system is simply related to the tangential speed by omega is equal to v tangential over r. And so again, for the 3g case, that is just 16.3 meters per second divided by the 9.0 meter radius of the centrifuge. And if I do that, that gives me 1.8 radians per second for the angular speed in this case. And you can evaluate that number for yourself um, for the 20g case as well. Okay, so that's all there is to it. We'll do another example sometime. Good luck.